as we watch Adam walk in the hall, we place him securely in our hyperextension patient category. Globally, it's very interesting and notice how much energy he generates using his shoulders. In the second gait segment, we see him walking at a much more controlled pace. And although his shoulder movement has been reduced, so has his velocity and his ability to get down the hall with certainty and confidence. The plantar flexion position that we see at mid stance does not seem to be driven by high tone. However, if you watch his ankle closely, there is a slight deviation in consistency in his ankle control. My sense is that it isn't as dependable as we would like. I chose to use the number two as an entry point for Adam into the DAFO system. A plantar flexion stop, free dorsiflexion, is the highest stability in the sagittal plane for a patient who hyperextends their knee. The clinical goal is in fact to restrict the choices that Adam can make so that all the movement that he is allowed includes the knee moving forward into more flexion and not backward into more hyperextension. Casting Adam for his number twos is very straightforward. He's a good candidate for the Cascade footplate system. The footplate system should impart a definition to the plantar surface that will enhance the sensory feedback to Adam as he wears the finished DAFO. During the casting, I manipulate the foot both for its frontal plane alignment and for the sagittal plane alignment of the ankle. I always like my cast to be as precise as possible to the finished position for the plan brace. Any alteration tends to diminish the accuracy of fit. The next video footage we are watching is Adam using his braces in a therapy session. This footage was taken approximately one month after he'd received his new DAFOs. One of the things I notice as I watch Adam in this footage, particularly as he's playing basketball, is that he uses a forward dorsiflexed ankle position that he stabilizes himself using active plantar flexion frequently. In fact, the game of basketball, as played by the therapist, where she rolls the ball to his feet rather than passing it to him, which is more typical of true basketball, require him to use quite a bit of dorsiflexion during his stance and balance activity that supports shooting baskets. A similar activity is required of him in playing baseball, which actually has more of a dynamic quality in that the therapist has him running bases in circles to the left and occasionally to the right. She also has him doing a jumping game which requires very strong plantar flexion and knee extension and hip extension to generate the ability to actually jump off the floor. It's interesting to note that even though his braces are blocked from a certain range of plantar flexion, he has access to active plantar flexion in the arc of positions that the braces allow. In fact, these number twos require Adam to use active plantar flexion almost constantly when he's weight bearing, whereas his hyperextended position, which he used without braces, allowed him to not use plantar flexion as a primary stability of the knee. To me, Adam represents one of the best before and after I've ever seen. He makes dramatic improvements in his gait. His shoulder rolling is significantly reduced. He walks smoother. The hyperextension is almost absent. He consistently uses dorsiflexion. I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how well he accommodated the control and stability offered by the number two and used it to develop gait patterns that did not require the hyperextension as a primary means of stabilizing his knee. I am extremely optimistic that these braces will match his needs for the approximately one year that this set of braces will fit somebody Adam's age. In conclusion, this is a very successful bracing outcome.